Well, welcome to Pancreas School. I'm Dr. Doug Evans, and we're producing a series of videos uh, to, uh, as a service to our patients and their families to try to explain a complex disease that we call uh, pancreatic cancer. And uh, I'm going to cover today in, in this lesson of Pancreas School uh, a brief review of anatomy and physiology, a couple uh, thoughts on uh, tumor location, and spend a little bit of time on, on the Whipple operation since that's something that everyone has heard about and there are a lot, there's a fair bit of confusion and misconception. Even though we've pride, tried to produce uh, handbooks and, and written uh, manuals uh, to describe this. And I'm going to also discuss a little bit about blood vessels, even though we're going to have a whole separate edition of, uh, of Pancreas School, which, thought, which talks about the staging of the disease. Uh, pancreatic cancer right now is the second leading cause of adult cancer death in the state of Wisconsin, behind only lung cancer. And it will soon be that way for um, uh, the en entire country. And the reason for that is pancreas cancer affects uh, lovely people who have taken good care of themselves. Uh, a tiny portion of pancreas cancer is probably what we refer to as the Patrick Swayze phenotype. Uh, people who have started smoking as a young teenager and, and there probably is a relationship with very heavy uh, tobacco use. Uh, a teeny fraction of pancreas cancer is probably related to what we refer to as the Luciano Pavarotti phenotype. Luciano Pavarotti, the famous opera singer who was uh, a very huge man and, and uh, some of pancreas cancer may be related to diet and obesity. And then there's a small amount of pancreas cancer that's uh, probably related to genetic predisposition. And we're going to have a whole nother lesson of pancreas school related to uh, the importance of genes, uh, germline mutations, genetic testing, and why that's important. But if you took, take all that together, so inherited predisposition, Luciano Pavarotti, Patrick Swayze, that's probably less than 10% of pancreas cancer. 90%, the, the main risk factor for the other 90% is simply being a, a good person. And that's why many of us are devoting our entire lives to, uh, to the treatment of this disease and, and why we're so privileged to take care of uh, all of you who are watching this video. Well, let's get started with uh, anatomy and physiology. So um, my mother probably would not approve of, uh, of this uh, lesson as a, as a career uh, teacher, but, um, and I know my wife wouldn't as a career high school teacher, but I'll, I'll do my best. So this is the stomach and the pancreas sits in behind here in a very tricky location, just like this. Um, we're then going to put our bile duct in, gallbladder, <laughs> and the bile duct comes down and goes into the pancreas, comes behind the first portion of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum, and it joins the pancreatic duct, and it ends in a fascinating structure called the ampulla ovata. Um, the bile duct, of course, comes from the liver. So this is the liver here. This is the gallbladder. And then you see the stomach. This is all pancreas here. And then you have uh, a number of feet of small intestine, which then end up in your colon. So that when you eat uh, a cheeseburger, for example, it goes into your stomach, is, uh, is, uh, is then passed uh, into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. There are uh, uh, cells within the stomach and duodenum which, create, which uh, secrete hormones, which tell the gallbladder to contract, which is storing bile. It also tells the pancreas to contract, and the pancreatic enzymes and the bile squirt into the intestine to merge with the food to aid in digestion. The pancreas has two main functions. It produces digestive enzymes, and it also produces uh, hormones, the mo most common being insulin. And uh, cancers of the pancreas uh, typically involve uh, the, the cancers that we're refer talking about today, pancreatic uh, adenocarcinoma or pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. It's a cancer of the enzyme processing cells. So if I took this pancreatic duct here and I made it bigger, um, the cells that produce pancreas cancer are lining this duct. And um, one of them becomes abnormal, transforms into a cancer, and the disease uh, then is, uh, is, uh, is initiated. Patients can also present with a cancer of the uh, endocrine pancreas, 
the cells that make hormones, uh, probably one of the most famous people to have uh, a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor or an islet cell tumor was Stephen Jobs. Um, and they can occur anywhere in the pancreas. Uh, we talk, typically refer to this as the tail, uh, this as the uh, body, uh, and then the head of the pancreas uh, right there. To review, the pancreas has two main functions, produces digestive enzymes uh, and produces uh, hormones, the most common being insulin. And it's nestled in behind the stomach. The bile duct goes directly into the pancreas, joins with the pancreatic duct, and ends in the ampulla. For patients with pancreatic adenocarcinoma, the most common type of pancreas cancer, if the tumor occurs in the pancreatic head, they will frequently get jaundiced because their bile duct is obstructed. So their eyes become yellow, urine becomes dark, stools become light look in the mirror and the whites of the eyes become yellow, indicating that there's bile duct obstruction. The, oftentimes, patients with tumors in the head of the pancreas therefore present when the tumors are a little bit smaller, earlier in the uh, disease uh, uh, process. Patients with tumors in the body and the tail of the pancreas, because they don't impinge on the bile duct, may actually present a little bit later. So it is true that um, more patients with tumors in the pancreatic head tend to be operable than patients with the body and tail. But in fact, we, take, we uh, see patients and do successful surgeries that are actually proven to be curative for patients who have tumors in any location within the pancreas. The Whipple operation was de initially described by Dr. Alan Whipple, uh, uh, who worked in uh, New York City many years ago. And um, we do the operation much differently than he did it back then. But what is removed is the gallbladder and bile duct and the, the entire duodenum. And then we divide the pancreas. And then one can either leave the entire stomach or divide the lower part of the stomach. Oftentimes, uh, we take the lower part of the stomach because this area has had both chemotherapy and radiation. We like to remove all of the radiated tissue and then connect everything back up that is, uh, that is non-radiated and healthy. So this is what is removed with a so-called Whipple operation. And if we, if we did this operation and now everything is taken out, what we're left with is our pancreas, <laughs> the uh, bile duct, and the liver, and then the stomach. Okay, we then take, if we put a little A here, we're gonna take the end of the small intestine, just distal, or just after the duodenum, and that's what we're gonna to use to put everything back together again. So we, we sew it to the pancreas right here. So we hook the pancreas right back into the small intestine. Then we sew the bile duct back in. Then we bring it over and sew it to the stomach. Well, if, uh, if things were this easy, then, um, then there would be no problem. But obviously, uh, there are complexities in that the tumors are judged sometimes to be operable, sometimes to be inoperable. Um, and the anatomy here is very complicated, and that's because uh, all of our abdominal organs need to get oxygenated, rich uh, blood flow to them to survive. The liver is a little bit unique in that it has an artery and a vein going to it. And unfortunately, that artery and the vein is incredibly close to the pancreas. So I'm going to just first go over the veins that are relevant to pancreatic surgery that go to the liver. And then I'll give a brief discussion on the arteries that go to the liver. I'm going to put our liver in here, and then I'm going to draw the, the, the uh, veins that go to the liver. And uh, this is the portal vein, the splenic, and the superior mesenteric vein, and I'll explain this. So this is the portal vein, this is the splenic vein. And the spleen is over here. 
and this is the superior mesenteric vein. I'll just abbreviate that SMV. And um, <laughs> all of the small intestines are down here. All of your small intestines, the first part of your large intestine. So if you were to eat a cheeseburger from Culver's this afternoon, um, a lot of the nutrients would be absorbed into the superior, into the veins draining the small intestine. There's an artery going in as well as a vein. They would be then absorbed into the, what we call the, mes the mesenteric venous circulation, the superior mesenteric vein. And that blood containing all of the nutrients is then processed through the liver. And then the liver drains into the inferior vena cava and up to the heart. So the blood get all of the nutrient rich blood from the intestines get gets processed through the liver. That's why why you have a liver, and then it gets drained back uh, into the heart and then it's pumped uh, throughout the body. So unfortunately, when the pancreas was put in in here, the pancreas sits just like this, right on top of everything. So you can imagine if you had a pancreatic cancer that involved uh, this aspect of the vein, that vein would either need to be taken out or repaired or replaced in some way, but this vein has to be intact in order for blood to successfully be, uh, leave your small intestines. The liver needs both an artery and a vein going to it. Uh, over the last number of decades, we have uh, spent a great deal of time uh, involved in figuring out how to replace and remove and put back together again this short segment of mesenteric venous anatomy. Um, and, and I can't tell you the, uh, the amount of time we've put into this, but I think we now have developed uh, uh, operative techniques allowing us to routinely, in a very safe way, replace any segment of this venous system as long as we have an adequate vein right here, adequate portal vein, and we have an adequate vein down here uh, below the pancreas. So that's the venous anatomy. Well, unfortunately, the arterial anatomy is perhaps uh, even more complicated uh, than the venous anatomy going to the liver. Remember that all of the abdominal organs need to have oxygenated blood from the heart. Um, and the heart gives off, if we put the heart up here, it gives off uh, a main highway called the aorta, which goes down the left side of the spinal column and then goes down all the way down uh, into the uh, lower abdomen to then divide into two so that one goes to the right leg, one goes to the left leg. And if we put if we put the diaphragm, many of you have heard of the diaphragm, we'll put the diaphragm in there that separates the chest from the abdomen. Uh, well, down in the abdomen, the aorta gives off a couple blood vessels that supply all of the blood to the, uh, to the abdominal organs, which is so important. And the first one is the celiac artery, which gives off a branch to the spleen. It gives off a branch to the stomach. And then for, for this important conversation, it gives off a branch that's going to go to the liver. I didn't leave enough room for the liver in my, uh, in my diaphragm there, so I'll put the diaphragm back in another time, but you can see. So that's going to go to our liver, so we'll make believe that our diaphragm actually let me move our diaphragm up. I think Frank Netter, who's a famous uh, 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 artist who's done a lot of medical il illustrations, he's not threatened by me at all. Uh, so we'll put our diaphragm uh, up there. The chest got kind of shrunk in there. But uh, this, is the, this is then the common hepatic artery, and this goes to the liver. Uh, and then we have the superior mesenteric artery, which goes to all of the small intestines. So obviously, after any pancreas operation, there has, there has to be some uh, arterial flow to the stomach. The spleen, less important, but we'll just ignore the spleen for now. And there has to be an artery going to the liver. 
And of course, there has to be an artery going to the small intestine. Well, unfortunately, the pancreas sits right there. So you can see how the pancreas could, a pancreas tumor could involve the hepatic artery relatively easily. It could also extend, a tumor could extend to the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. And um, surgeons around the world have spent a great deal of time figuring out how to deal with uh, pancreatic tumors that uh, come close or abut or at are attached to the superior mesenteric artery, the common hepatic artery, um, and again, I'm putting the liver right, right here, uh, and the pancreas. So how to deal with these, with these tumor artery interactions, how to deal with the tumor vein interactions is a critical aspect of uh, successful pancreatic surgery, and I think something that we have uh, really made a major contribution to the surgical management of this disease around the world here at, uh, at the Medical College of Wisconsin and the Laban Pancreatic Cancer Program. Uh, at the end of the operation, there has to be blood flow through the superior mesenteric artery to the small intestines. There has to be both an artery going to the liver and a vein going to the liver. I think those are the, are the, uh, are the basic take-home take elements. And I think before any uh, pancreatic cancer operation, um, your surgeon will, will go over what is planned with respect to the, uh, uh, the blood vessel management. But if there's any question, um, we are certainly here to help. This area of pancreatic surgery is one of our main interests. So in this lesson of pancreas school, hopefully I provided a little bit more information on anatomy and physiology, the fact that tumors can be located uh, in the head, body, and tail of the pancreas, how the Whipple operation is done or what is involved in the Whipple operation, and then the importance of at least a, a basic understanding of the fact that the liver needs both a vein and an artery going to it at the end of the operation. So thanks for watching, and uh, please stay tuned to the next uh, lesson involved in pancreas school here at the Laban Pancreatic Cancer Program.